Welcome to our reality, everyone. I don't know why you're here, but I'm glad you are because tonight we're going to be talking about the episode of Big Brother 22 that we saw tonight. And we're also going to catch up a little bit on the live feed since our last podcast was Sunday. We've got so much to go over. We've got a wall yeller. We've got Memphis hurting his back. We got we, That mystery was solved a little bit tonight. We've got um, a whole lot of Ian waking up finally, calling out uh, you know, Cody and Nicole in the core alliance. I wonder where he got that idea. Uh, but we also have a lot of feed outages that kind of ruined a lot of uh, possible drama moments. But we're going to go over everything. We're going to catch up. We're going to talk about what we expect for tomorrow's episode and then what our hopes and dreams are that are eventually going to get crushed uh, in the next HOH competition. But we're going to talk about everything uh, here right now in this late, late, late hour podcast uh my name is barrett joining me is the lovely roxy hotman we do not have daniel icon brown here tonight in our first attempt to at this i made a joke that he was going to a water park in the morning i can't make the same joke twice unfortunately but he is going on vacation tomorrow morning uh and we will miss him dearly tonight as roxy drops her phone in remembrance of daniel icon brown um <laughs> i actually threw it down i didn't drop it I was it was so upset. it was impressive um this is our second attempt at the show for people watching after the fact the first time did not go very well but i said sort of the same thing in the intro uh ish, ish. but it, it, it's okay because you know we we bounce back we this is not our first technology run-in uh where not everything goes right in fact it's far from our first so you know we bounce back like we always do but before we get started, if you're not subscribed to the channel, uh, I encourage you to subscribe. If you haven't liked this video yet, I encourage you to do that because that helps us out a ton. Uh, if you want to join our Facebook group and talk Big Brother with us 24-7, that link is in the description below. Uh, if you, I don't know, there's nothing else really. Uh, besides... The, 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 the start again, <laughs> the... Um... The hotline number. Yeah, the hotline number. We do have a hotline. If you want to call us and leave us a voicemail at 501-436-9358. That's actually not in the description. I should probably start adding that. Uh, but if you want to leave us a voicemail, we will play it on the podcast. Uh, much like our friend Marty from Rhode Island, who left us a nice little voicemail. And I X'd out of the tab because I thought we were done using it in the last attempt. But here we are again. I got to well, go back I to it. I love the I love the voicemail feature and I know I said it last time but I'm going to say it a 100 times. I forget that we have it and now that Marty has reminded us that we have it, I need everybody to call and leave messages on the voicemail because they make me so happy. Right now. It. And it's not like we don't love the chat because everyone in chat is wonderful, but we love hearing your voice even more. Like it it, it takes away that both. layer. Yeah. yeah, I want you to do both. <laughs> Be a dual chatter, okay? We want to hear your voice and see your text. I'm needy, okay? <laughs> Not really. By the way, we are live right now, if that wasn't uh, obvious from the last time I spoke. Uh, but I know Zingbot said I said that number so fast. But hello, everyone that's in the chat for the second time, uh, for me saying hello to everyone in chat. But let's play this voicemail from Marty, who gives us uh, their insight into Big Brother All-Stars. Marty, take it away. Hey, this is Marty. I'm calling from Rhode Island. Um, I love your podcast. And I gotta say, CBS better do something quick because this is a very, very, very sad all star season. I'm so tired of the big groups doing everything and taking over. And the other people are supposed to be all stars, but they don't see it. Urgh. Ta-ta. I will have uh, ta-ta in my head for weeks to come. Uh, but thank I you, mean, Marty. Look, I concur. <laughs> I, they, I'm right there with Marty. Just, uh, I, I mean, feel the same way. Daniel Icon Brown would be the first person to say that as soon as Janelle was evicted last week, the first thing he said was uh, ta-ta to the season <laughs> at large. So he actually did and i got on to him for that today actually i got on to you and daniel for that very thing today y'all are raining on my parade well that that's what we're best at honestly because <laughs> daniel made a joke in the chat that the, over. i know but daniel made a joke in our group chat that the season ended on august 20 wait when, august 25th is that now august 20 when, when did janelle get evicted whatever day that was <laughs> I know it's season 22. I don't know. Whatever day that she went home two weeks ago, week ago, one, whenever. One week ago in about an hour and 15 minutes. Uh, yeah. But it was sad. Well, I mean, and the things haven't gotten much better this week because, you know, Janelle left last week and immediately was like, 
as soon as she saw Kaser's uh, goodbye message and was like, you know, know. oh no, I'm worried. He doesn't know what's going on in that house. He really doesn't. Uh, But now we're about to have the second week in a row, as you might hear my dog in the distance. Uh, We're going to have the second week in a row that one of Janelle and Kaser will go out of the house after nearly winning the HOH, like in reach, like completely within reach. It's terrible and I hate it. But I don't think the season is over. I think the feeds were pretty good this week. Like, I was entertained much of the time. Not when we had an eight-hour feed outage. I wasn't entertained with that. Right. But um, I did enjoy a lot of the shenanigans that went on with, you know, like, the, the wall yeller and then the aftermath of that. Should we, then... should we get started with that? Should I play that clip? Yeah, let's do it. All right. I said I'm going to play that clip, but then I immediately don't have that clip because we ended up yeah. talking about a completely different clip later on and I, I went away from the wall yeller. Uh, oh, yeah. That was my fault, too. But I'm going to go ahead and play the clip of the wall yeller. If you can't hear it too well, it's probably going to be a bit quiet, but just know. It says, Nicole and Cody are playing everyone twice over a megaphone, over the wall. Here we go. All right, so that, that was what the wall yeller yelled, and this was, you can thank Evil Dick for this, I, I am pretty certain, uh, just based on a tweet that was uh, sent out and pretty much Evil Dick uh, quoted it and said, this is what you should say. That person apparently said it. Uh, so you can thank Evil Dick if you want to. Uh, but- yeah. And then when Danielle goes home, um, she can also thank Evil Dick for leading to her. Well, I mean, she also had a hand in her demise, but it was a catalyst for a lot of things that went on in the house this week, which is why I'm saying the season, there's so much game left to be played. Now, if in two or three weeks, it's, you know, the other side of the house is like still steamrolling, we can call it over then. That's fine. But I don't want to do it yet. I still have a modicum of hope-ish. I mean, what would make this season, I think we can go the, we can talk about the polar opposites. What would this make, what would make this season great? Obviously, for starters, it would have been to form some yeah. sort of faction to save Kaser this week, which is not going to happen, even though the votes could be there if they just realize that Christmas is I, in this yes. alliance. Yes. Yeah. I um, I, I feel like, though, the only way that that could happen is if somebody has a rogue vote again. Otherwise, it can't happen because I don't think they could have the votes. I think they I, could get close. The, it would have had to have started to be formed a couple of days ago, but it would have taken Ian, Kevin, Day, Bay, David, who's never going to vote that way, uh, and then Memphis, who would consider it, I'm sure, but he's not going to go that way unless probably a few more people would as well because he's not going to risk his own game for Kaser. That's just not going to happen. Uh, so... <sighs> It, that would have that's what that's probably the six most reasonable votes Kaser would have needed but yeah but I, they don't I don't think that they see that like I don't know because they don't think Christmas is with this group I know Ugh. maybe that, we should have we should have a wall yeller yell that that's Someone yeah get their just, stat right they need now a, the same person just go over and say and also Christmas and then that that'd be fine. Yes. Can uh, you just tack that on, please? <laughs> uh, also, I forgot to mention, but Christmas is also doing things in the house. Don't just just uh, go after to. Is that Christmas your megaphone well. voice? I had to distort it somehow because I didn't know else. I didn't know how else to, to do that. I love it. I love it. No, I just. I don't know. You and Daniel were just trying to make me mad today with that. I yeah. It's what we're good at. I mean, it's true. Yeah. Daniel succeeds more often than I do, but sometimes... Yeah, it's like, it's rare for you to do that, but Daniel, it's daily. (laughs) Real Medical Nectar says we need a weekly wall yeller. I can get behind that. Like, that would be an interesting twist is that a wall yeller is allowed to come by once a week, but they can only say one sentence, but they get to choose what the sentence is. 
Uh, I don't hate it. I don't hate it at all. I, but I'm, I mean, listen, the wall yellers, I mean, we have them all the time. They don't bother me. I don't care. I, it, it irritates me kind of like CBS is like, like they try to pretend it didn't happen and they're like, we don't want it to affect the game. Why? There's so many other things that you use to affect the game. Who cares if a wall yeller yeah. yells? Y'all are already affecting the game enough, CBS. I'm talking to you. Yeah, well, it's irritating to me. Mr. CBS is shaking in his boots right now. He, he should is, be. They're all watching. All, all of CBS's uh, executive team is sitting here watching our <laughs> podcast. They were the first ones to type, lagging yes. video. Your video is lagging. That was them. They suck. No, I mean, why wouldn't they be watching us? I, oh, I can't think wait. of a reason. I mean, yeah. I don't know. I just, all of these people, though, they're like, well, the wall yelling is okay because there was pre-gaming going on. And I'm like, I also don't think pre-gaming is a big deal. It is expected when you have returning players. It's a given. And if you think for one second that pre-gaming has only occurred well, from Derek Lavasser, I think that's just nuts to me. Even, even Paul nuts. somehow pre-gamed by knowing Raven coming into BB19. Like, even with one person returning, it's like, wow, it's amazing how they do it. Uh, I mean, it, it really, they like, come on. Yeah. And I just can't. It, it, of course, the, the feeds were cut for about four hours-ish, so we have no idea what happened in those four hours. Um, but It was way... Oh, on the the wall yeller yes. day. Yes. Not last night. Last night there was yeah. threats was like, of a of a wall yeller. Uh, apparently, this is not confirmed, but it's there was not some... confirmed. But apparently, there's like security, undercover security <laughs> at that. And, and look, I have no confirmation of this. I don't even know where this rumor originated, but the accepted story is. That there, are, <laughs> there is undercover security in the parking lot of the apartment complex that backs up to the house. And that is where an attempted wall yelling occurred. <laughs> and they were accosted by undercover Jocosted. security. Yes, they were accosted. And and I feel like they had like walkie talkies and I like to think like, they were just like pretending to be painters and they're just painting this one spot on the giant wall over and over <laughs> again. Yeah, it's, I, no, I picture it more like Paul Blart and they're like on segways. Well, they're not very like, undercover then, are they? <laughs> they're just apartment security. They're not CBS security. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> no, like just envisioning what undercover security in the apartment complex parking lot that's there strictly to monitor wall yellings what that must look like like the things that i envision they're like <laughs> we've got a suspicious person do not know if they have a <laughs> megaphone but they i can confirm bag, they though. do have a mouth and a large <laughs> one that mouth could do damage i will say I'm just, that like I wish I knew, though, what that wall yeller... I mean, I know somebody claimed that it was them and what they had intended to yell, and I just wish I had, like, real... Like, dear wall yellers, I also am going to need some video footage of you wall yelling, if you don't mind. <laughs> right. That'd be but, great. But nonetheless, uh, there was an attempted wall yelling, apparently, and then the feeds were cut for eight-ish hours uh, after the fact. <laughs> Which is, I guess, is is that CBS's way of just saying every time you do this, we're gonna cut the feeds for a long time. No, like, I think, I think they just forgot. They just forgot. They like, <laughs> yeah, I think they. <laughs> I think. Look, it. They're not fully staffed, although they can apparently staff undercover security. Uh, I don't know, but I feel like they're like we've got an attempted wall yell, and then they. <laughs> hit the button and then i don't know they went out for donuts and coffee or something and then all of a sudden like like jimmy or don or whoever they're like oh my gosh i forgot to push the button <laughs> <laughs> and that's how it happened <laughs> no i don't really think that but 
It would be funny if that were the case. <laughs> I, yeah, I would also like to imagine they're just out at like a Dunkin' Donuts, and <laughs> right? Away, just like Don, did you you turn the feeds back on, right? You just. just <laughs> I imagine Don is the same security officer from earlier, and he's just like wide eyed. It just, <laughs> yeah, and I think all of it... that, I just pictured him like Don Knott, aka Barney <laughs> Five from uh, Andy Griffith's show. <laughs> That's what I pictured. Oh my gosh, I'm doing a lot of imagining tonight. I'm yeah. so sorry. It's okay. I don't. I don't think people will complain too much until they watch this tomorrow, and they're like, they hurry up, please. Yeah, they're like, can you talk about Big Brother? I mean, in a way, we are. No, okay, so after the wall yelling and the feeds were down for four hours and we don't know exactly what happened during those four hours, we do know a, a, quite a bit about the aftermath of that particular message. I mean, we see on the clip that you played, like, and there's a couple of angles, but, um, like, you can see the moment that Christmas is, like, becomes alert. <laughs> She's yeah. like... She's like shaking her legs. She's just kind of like staring at the yeah. log and suddenly she just stiffens up. And it's funny to watch yeah. all those angles because there's like Christmas, Kaser, and Memphis all sitting Memphis on that was, couch. Yeah, he was smiling about that. Yeah. He's, I, <laughs> but I just, I, it's, it's so unfortunate that we're never going to be able to get their thoughts on it like in full. Like there's been little trinkets of stuff. I think maybe Ian found a clever way to not talk about the wall yeller, but still be have himself edited into this episode with a mastermind edit uh, by saying, you know... Which, I mean, he kind of is, but he did get a little help. Well, it, he did get he, a little help. He's essentially... He, he says, though, that he's been saying a lot of those things in the DR, but we don't know because they don't... They don't play real DRs, and we I don't know, know it. Because Ian, I, Ian, after the fact, now he sounds like every single, like, Big Brother opinionated updater that <laughs> once something happens, they constantly go out there and tweet, "This is what I've been saying all along," even though they've never said that. <laughs> uh, well, uh, I mean, yes, there's definitely some truth to that, but he may have had a passing fanciful thought in that direction <laughs> but he never said it to us so i don't know ian but i mean it has you know he's got a fire under him right now he like, does. He, yeah he's been a big talker since uh all of this went down and in particular the big talk that he had with case or do you talk. have big talk the big talk with case or kevin or both well or... both but i loved um the i mean he had a, a a long talk with kevin about um i mean basically just like laying it all out like this 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 and this and kevin also had his opinions which surprisingly were much better than they were at the beginning of the season um but he also you know knows what the wall yeller said and uh but i was really talking about the case or one and how you know when ian just needed a hug and then he cried and i yeah, I don't know if I have the entire. So actually, never mind. I do have a clip of um, Ian telling Case or he thinks there's a fake guys alliance, if that's what you're referring to. Uh, but yeah, it was after this conversation that Ian started crying and gave Case a hug. We're just like, oh my god, because Ian, his big thing with Case is like, you're smarter than me, and you're the only person yeah. I've ever played with that's smarter than me, and that's why he's I mean so like. That's why that's he wants to work true. with Kaser so much. But then again, he's also just like, I have to vote you out. Sorry. Like, <laughs> well, I know. Kaser's like, do you think that – he said this to Ian. He said, well, I mean, do you think that now, you know, that all of this has come to light? Do you think there's any chance at all for me to stay? And Ian's like, no. <laughs> yeah. <Ian laughs> no, I really really don't. <laughs> honest about that because when he first came to Kaser, he's like, I've got information that's like bombshell, essentially. It was like that. And Kaser was like, is it going to help me stay? And Ian said – no, but I, like, <laughs> yeah, no, not at all. There's no chance for you to stay. And then Ian's like, do you think that when Kaser walks out the door, we could get him to blow everything up? Like, <laughs> yeah. no, yeah, I don't think you can. Yeah, it was it was Bailey you and Dave Vaughn, right? That were talking to Kaser and we're like, can you uh, blow up Danny's game on your way out possibly? And he was like, maybe. But like <laughs> everyone on Twitter was like, please, well, Ian, we don't want to do I this. Mean, 
Yeah, and and I think maybe Kevin actually talked about that too. Like, I mean, that's the big thing is they're all like, <laughs> do you think we could get Kaser to say this or to do that on his way out? No. You guys are voting him out. He's not going to. <laughs> Why would he do that for you? And it is <laughs> Well, because he's super nice, so maybe. <laughs> and you, you weren't here to talk about, but you, you listened to me and Daniel's frustration with how Kaser is right about everything in the house. Yeah, and Bailey's like, just shut up. <laughs> yeah, essentially. Not only just shut up, but like, why don't you ever ask I mean, me for yeah. advice? Like, why did, like, why did, why does old school keep complaining about new school? Why doesn't old school just like you come to us and be like, do you can I like how how can we do better? Which is like, oh my god! Like I I watching that clip tonight on the show, even it though I watched it, why, even though I watched it on the feeds, it was like seeing her dr where she confirmed like just because uh, Janelle is gone doesn't mean I'm gonna have any loyalty to Caser anymore. It was so frustrating, mm -hmm. but also I was like, I want Bailey to go out next just because I want her to like know that Caser is right. But then I'm like, I tame myself, tame myself because Bailey- My, Yeah, I don't want her to go out because I feel like that Bailey is gonna be, um, well, I hope that she's gonna be instrumental in, in trying to go against, you know, this, the core. Why do they keep calling every like? How do they know that's called the core four? It, Is that coincidental, it, or did the dr? No. So I think Ian first said it to Kevin about you know Nicole, Cody, and Tyler being this core of gr core group. Mm -hmm. uh, he even called them the core four at one point. I'm pretty sure. Well, yeah, and I also think Kaser said it at one point, and now I can't remember. It's it's in some of my notes somewhere. Right. Because the core four is actually Enzo, Cody, Danny, and Nicole, right? Right. I have to, I have to go back. All the C alliances always get hell, me crossed I out. don't know. I don't know who's in. Yeah. I just, Cause I don't know. The core four Can was uh, <laughs> Enzo, Cody, Danny, Nicole, and then Connect was Enzo, Cody, Day, and Bay. Uh, and then the Slick Six right. just adds Danny and Tyler uh, to the Connect. All right. I get it in my mind. My mind's okay now. Um, Mine's not, but okay. <laughs> but uh, the core four that they're thinking of are Tyler, Cody, uh, Nicole. Nicole and, and Danny. Yeah. Yeah, that's what they think is the core four. But every time I hear anybody say it, I'm like, how do they know that that's what it is? <laughs> they don't think they well, know that, like... It, Rod says it's just coincidental because core four is really generic. They are the four. They are the four that are in the core. In it's the more core. So what they're I mean, saying. Yeah, it, yeah, I get it, but I'm telling you, and I think I really would have to go back and look at my notes, and that's like a lot of trouble. Um, but yeah. I really think Casey was the first one that I actually heard say it, and I did a wait, what? What I did know, you say? I am 99% positive Ian said it to Kevin, and then when Kevin talked to Devon a little bit later, kind of referring mm. to the Ian conversation, even though he did not tell Davon it was Ian, but Davon kind of knows now because Ian went to Bailey and then Bailey went yeah, to Davon. Yeah, Bailey went to Davon. And yep. Davon's like, hmm, that sounds a lot like the person. She already had suspicion that it was Ian because in the middle mm -hmm. of that Kevin-Davon convo, she's like, is it Ian? I mean, you can tell me. Like, As they do in the house, yes. Yeah. Um, but I know he called it core and then Kevin called it core to Davon. And then, but what's it? What's, uh, yeah, at this point, they're all saying it and I'm like... But Ian's also called them the Kids Alliance, which I think is also the core four. Uh, or, I'm or like, the... I don't know. I don't know. I, at some point, I want to talk about, not right now, but at some point, I've got to talk about the new Boys Alliance. Right. The the newly formed, um, now has a name, Alliance of Cody, Enzo, and Tyler. But we can talk about mm -hmm. that in a little bit. Yeah, but not yet. But yeah, we have to we have to go over this Ian stuff a little bit more because... Yes. Uh we haven't really said specifically what he's talked about, but we saw early on in this morning, the morning after the wall yeller, Ian sitting on the hammock talking to the cameras, and he brings up that he knows there's this kids alliance and that he knows he's on the outs. Um, and we got to remember that Ian formed for Prime, which consists of himself, Nicole, uh, Danny, and Cody. So he's got three of the, the four in the core uh already in his alliance uh that he's created that no one really has loyalty to and in fact the only person that has loyalty to him in this house fully is probably Kaser and nicole when he's losing one of them this week anyway kevin to he an doesn't even realize it 
Yeah, he well he he's he's start he's getting there. He's ish. But he's sitting there on the hammock and he brings up his distrust for this kids alliance and then he brings up Nicole um cuz obviously this is the day after he heard someone say over a megaphone that Nicole and Cody are playing everyone. So he you know that gets him thinking a little bit. Uh as as one does um after hearing such information. And he talks a little bit about how he would take Nicole to the end, but he would cut her at final three, which is a new revelation into this million club alliance uh, that apparently he is not so loyal to. And I haven't really gotten an inkling that Nicole would cut Ian at final three if she got the chance. I think she thinks he's the only one she could win against. Yeah, that's the that I mean, that's the whole point of the alliance. But well, I mean, I know that's what. I know that's what she has been saying, which I think is a, it, that's a stupid way to, I mean, it, it, you could go that way, sure, but you could also, like, say nobody's ever going to vote for me. I've already won, so I'm ideal to sit next to. You could, and plus, I'm extremely hated, so... You know, you could go that way too, but I know she said that a lot, but I've never really thought that she really meant it until just recently. Like, I really think she wants to go to the end with Ian because she thinks that she could win against him and can't or has a better chance. I, I hope she doesn't win. It, I really do. It's just wild to me that, uh, she is so open about this alliance with Ian and me and Daniel kind of talked about this on Sunday, but she has said to Cody in a conversation. Yeah, I'll, I'll take Ian to the end. Like he's the only person I can win against to Cody, which is like, yeah. what are you saying? <laughs> yeah, I don't get it. Well, I mean, listen, I don't think she's the most logical person anyway. Well, she, she's not, but she knows how to play the game. Unfortunately, uh, she does. And I hate saying that. I really do. I don't like saying it, but she she does. She plays the game. She plays it differently than I would. I I would I I don't I do not think if you were in that house Roxy, you would play like Nicole Franzel. I I hate to break it to you, but you would not. <laughs> so I'm glad no. I'm glad you think that about yourself. Uh, I would never <laughs> I'm way too mean, first of all. To I mean, in a different way, not in a mean girl catty way. In a I will slit your throat and you won't see it coming way. <laughs> More like that. Yeah, you'll never play. You say whatever. Uh, no, I would never. But none of us be believe hated. you. And be hated by everyone. No, I don't really care about that. <laughs> 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 uh, Ian goes on to say uh, that. Well, I guess I should. I could. I could fast forward a little bit to his conversation with Kevin, where he brings up more Derek Lavasser playing into this whole scenario, which just came out of left field. We didn't. I did not expect him to bring up Derek Lavasser of all people. But he, he's talking to Kevin, and you know, he's kind of making the comparison that it's like he got to look at BB Twitter for ten minutes. This conversation, because uh, he brings up how. This season's kind of like season 19 in a way, where you have this large alliance that picks out two people uh, as the scapegoats for everything. And so uh, Jess and Cody on BB19 are now Janelle and Kaser on BB22. And um, he's making these comparisons. And then he's saying that Derek Lavasser, you know, kind of schemed together and pre-gamed this alliance that's now controlling the house. And at Kevin, he, I thought he was going to take this conversation and walk away from it thinking like oh he's he's out of his mind like ian has lost it i like i gotta tell someone i gotta paint ian as a target and he even makes his face towards the camera as he's leaving like the <laughs> hammock he's like like <laughs> he's I like know. Did he really just say that but then kevin talks to dave on and it's just, he almost tried to make it like it's his revelation like he he was kind of like i just realized something nicole and Cody and Tyler, they're they're the core. And Danny, she's on the outskirts. And Davon's like, what are you talking? Danny's in this alliance. Danny's not on the outskirts of anything. He's like, no, no, no. She's expendable. Uh, and I, I figured I mean, this out. She is right now. 
Well, yes, but Dave Vaughn doesn't believe it, unfortunately. Bay and Day don't believe the right stuff at times, and that's kind of the frustrating thing with all of this. Uh, I know. It's hard. And so then then he kind of goes into being like, you know, you know Derek? And she's like, yeah, I know Derek. And he's like, he, he pre-gamed, like Dave Vaughn pre-gamed. She's like, Where, where'd you get this tea? And he's like, I can't say. I really can't say. And she's like, you're not going to tell me? You don't trust me? He's like, I just can't say. Like, I, I don't I don't want you to be put in a situation where you know this because then. But I just told you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want you to have to know because it's too dangerous. Also, I just told you anyway because I don't truly care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can do whatever you want uh, with this information, but also don't tell anyone. Please don't tell anyone. <laughs> Exactly. This is a secret, and I'm only telling you and everyone else in the house, but all separately, don't let it get out. <laughs> if you could do all those things, that would be just perfect. Um, but yeah, it, and so obviously we already kind of went over this, but Davon, uh, or ba Ian ends up going to Bailey having the same exact conversation he had with Kevin, but also being like, don't tell anyone I, I said this ever. Uh, but then Bailey goes to Davon and is like, this is what Ian told me. Uh, and he started making these comparisons to season 19 and Davon's like, wow. Hmm. But in her mind, let's like, be like, I, I feel like I've heard this conversation twice now. Mm -hmm. Um, but well, what's really funny though, is <laughs> I, I just want to back up for a second is he said, do you know Derek? Like Derek Lavasser, who I've never heard of him. Derek, you say? Like, what is yes, Derek even a real name? What is this Derek is. you keep saying? Derek pregame. And I'm amazed they did not I mean, cut the feeds during that part. Uh, <laughs> but when nothing happens yesterday, they cut the feeds for eight hours. It's like we can't win, can we? Right. I, uh, I know, and I really honestly don't even, I, I don't care about pre-gaming, so what? Who cares? But I think it's funny, though, that it's playing a part in, in the house. It, when it is such a huge deal on toxic Twitter, like, <laughs> and it's in the house, too. Like, that's funny to me. Yeah, and... and it, I don't, I think it's just everyone's excuse for, I mean, obviously if no one had targeted Janelle and I know if there are certain people out there that have said, you know, Janelle pre-gamed more than anyone in that house did. Well, uh, that's the rumor. That, that's what they say. Uh, but I, <laughs> I think if Janelle doesn't get targeted immediately, I don't think people care about pre-gaming as much, or at least that whole Derek and Dan pre-gamed with these certain people. I think it would have been got, it would have gotten tossed a little bit under the wayside had things not turned out the way that they did but since things are well, turning out the way that they did i mean I'll, i mean it's, it's that goes for everything like it's a the bb fandom is so incredibly biased it's ridiculous like if the roles were reversed and whatever pre-gaming like let's say derek lavasser pre-gamed for janelle he would be the king of the world right now <laughs> if it, if if it benefited her. And look, I wouldn't complain about it either, but I'm not going to complain about it either way. I just find it fascinating. I mean, whatever, like it doesn't matter to me. You can hate love whoever you hate love. It doesn't matter. But I I just find it fascinating and almost humorous to see the double standards in literally everything, not just the pre-gaming, but everything if it benefits whoever you're rooting for then it's okay but if it doesn't then it is the worst thing in the world and everybody should be beheaded and right. I'm like wow okay yeah people are okay with wall yellers when they yell about nicole and cody uh, but <laughs> right. if they if they went in and yelled like a complete lie like i don't like what what, what would be a complete lie that everyone would be upset about like um i don't know like, i mean caser shits on all of you in the dr like that would wow <laughs> which, like which would be a megaphone thing um then it would be a little bit different because it would be a complete lie and it's not about and it's not about someone that uh well it's not about something that you hate so like 
I don't know. Saying Nicole and Cody are playing everyone is not exactly the truth anyway. Like, <laughs> I don't know why no, no one but... is bringing that up. They're not. They're playing together. Are they playing everyone? Not exactly. They're in two great spots, yes. But... Yes. But, I mean, that's what I'm saying. It's like, I don't care. To me, if something like that happens and you can play around it, good on you. That's what I say. Like, I think that's great. It like, I, it just blows my mind. Like, just the constant <laughs> Twitter fascinates me in general. <laughs> I mean, it, the cancel culture, all of it. I'm just like, I sit back and I read stuff and I'm like, wow, you said that. Okay. That is like really over the top. Okay. <laughs> yeah. OTT. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's something that will never not be toxic and it'll never not be on, on some form uh, mildly disturbing, but on the other hand, entertaining, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, yeah, it's like a train, like you can't look away from it. It's like, it, it is like a horrific like car accident on the interstate where traffic's backed up for miles because we're all like, well, would you look at that? Like, it's like that. I can't not look at it. It's a guilty pleasure. It really is. And it, it, it's a it's a big topic in this year's house because uh, we have people in the house now that are coming back after you know post being exposed to BB Twitter toxic fandom, uh, <laughs> and we've seen a, we've seen a couple of jabs like we've seen Tyler talk about it and we've seen of course Bailey talk about it and Nicole probably more than anyone talk about uh, toxic BB Twitter in a very negative way, as if that's going to help the situation. Uh, well, that's because she is the target of a lot of of hate. And so she really dislikes it. Right. And this year is not going to help it. Uh, I hate to break it to no. her. I mean, CBS yeah, is giving her the best be edit possible. It, they really are. Which uh, is infuriating these casuals are like that nicole she's so sweet i saw people oh my gosh over on facebook this week i saw people posting screenshots from twitter that or, or from instagram um that janelle had posted which i personally found to be humorous but on facebook they were all like i told you janelle's mean why would she do that to sweet nicole and i'm like is today opposite day? No one told me. Like, am <laughs> I in like a, another universe? Is this like a parallel universe? And no one told me that I stepped through some like invisible line here. What are y'all talking about? Like, I mean, when you go to Big Brother Facebook, like if you go to the main Big Brother page on Facebook, it literally is the it is opposite day all around because all the comments are completely opposite of how. Uh, people feel about certain house guests compared to bb twitter like it's ridiculous and i'm trying to find a uh let me try to find a like a post where people just comment about who they like i'm trying to see if there's a good one here um i'm probably not going to find one off the top of it i'll prepare one for next time but it's it's insane like when you see pictures of uh tyler and uh enzo and danny and nicole like when they have the camera that goes around the house to take snapshots and you post it on twitter everyone's like yeah i mean you can imagine what everyone on twitter says just like disgusting get this off my timeline mm -hmm. but when you put it on facebook everyone's like go nicole dan team danny like it's completely like, i know and it's, it is a completely the vast majority different world it, it 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 boggles the mind honestly i'm like but wait that's not how it happened and i blame the edit for uh, for that because they are giving nicole like this she's she's taking Tr jeff schroeder's place uh, she's not the golden boy she's the golden girl that's right. what's happening here and i'm like no 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 you've got it all wrong that's not how it happened and it just it blows my mind yeah uh and yeah, even tonight, I don't, it's just, it's hard to watch sometimes. 
uh, watching what happens on the feeds versus what is happening in the house. Like, I feel like in the last couple of seasons, they've done a decent job at keeping those storylines straight. But this year, I feel mm-hmm. like they it's going all off the wayside with certain storylines. And uh, most notably that we did not get um, enough, uh, like, follow-up on Memphis's back injury. Like, why was that? <laughs> I need to know more. (laughs) I'm telling you. Okay, so you guys talked about it on your podcast, and I definitely was in the chat making jokes about it, about how Memphis um, didn't even compete. He was the host. (laughs) What was with that corny voice he used, by the way? Um, He was the host and somehow entered his back. And so I had speculated just, you know, with friends or whatever about what Memphis could have possibly done to injure his back while hosting. (laughs) But never once did the scenario (laughs) did the scenario of his back seized when he was startled by the paint guns shooting (laughs) paint at the actual. (laughs) I have so like. Of the editing that's happened this season, that might be my favorite trinket because they know we were wondering what the hell happened to Memphis's back hosting the veto competition. And so they included that little line where he's like, oh, my back seized. And they were like, okay, it's clear. We, we've got yeah, it. It was so funny. When I heard that, I was like, wait, what? That's what happened? Like, I envisioned, like, I know that he had back troubles before entering the house. He has said that. So I envisioned, like, Maybe he tripped and fell and something happened. Maybe he was picking, I mean, something up to move. Like, and he just tweaked his back. No, he was literally startled by the sound of paint shooting from the paint guns at the contestants. And he said, oh, my back seized. <laughs> and it's so funny. And the voice... It was almost, remember in season 12 when Brendan hosted the competition where he was a wizard? Oh, don't, how, what do you, what kind of question is that? Of course I remember. <laughs> okay, it was almost, not quite, but it was almost to that level. I am always startled with how many uh, given lines Memphis has in the DR because he just doesn't seem like the guy who would be like, yeah, I'll say that whenever they feed him stuff. But he's by far the he's like Corey Brooks level of bad reading back those lines that he's given. <laughs> it's disturbing. Uh, but it, there was a lot of things that were horrible with tonight's episode. One that it just it just felt like a big episode where they had suspense where there was no suspense. Like, why do I care about if Kevin gets off the block or not? Like, I don't. I have no. I have no desire to watch like that part. And they made it seem like this big victory and he's crying like good for Kevin. I'm glad he won the veto, but we only cared about Kaser and like, <laughs> duh, we only care about Kaser because he's the only one who's actively going to try to get people, I mean, people out of this house. I cared about Kevin. I mean, don't care about not Kevin. as much as I did week one because he's aggravated me a lot, a lot, a lot. Um, and particularly how he single-handedly ruined a, a lot of things that I, you know, didn't want to happen. But, you know, I, he aggravated me with the whole Janelle stuff and his terrible, terrible reads. But I still remember this season 11, Kevin, and I liked him. I liked him. And so he still has a little tiny place in my heart. So I did care, but I did want Kaser to somehow like (laughs) stay. Um, (laughs) But that competition, I mean, Kevin did a good job in that competition. That was a hard one. Yeah. It's hard. And no one peed that we knew of, uh, unlike last year where Jackson Mickey. uh, Yeah. Jackson peed in that one, and Holly won. It was the Poison Ivy one last year. And, uh, I mean, I'm telling you, that comp is hard. Like, when I do that comp in my backyard just, you know, to practice, yeah, of course. it's difficult. Not even to practice yeah. for the real-life competition. Like, you're just practicing to watch it on TV, uh, which is yeah. absurd. But you do it anyway for the love of the I game. Mean, like, uh, yeah, I, I love these comps so much that I just, you know, build replicas in my backyard. <laughs> And my neighbors are like, oh, she's at it again. And I'm just out there hanging off ropes, 
peeing in my pants. <laughs> Totally, unre- totally unrelated to the competition. Uh, but yeah. I hate when I say stuff like that, though, because I immediately know Barrett's going to clip that out. Great. <laughs> I'm always like, damn it, why did I say that? <laughs> Your family's always horrified when you have to do the hide and go veto challenge. Uh, but... <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I asked my 43-year-old son, like, hey, can you uh, hide this from me? And then I come in and... <laughs> And I rip everything apart in the house. Yeah, and sure. then we all have to clean up. That's how we spring clean at my house, actually. <laughs> it's hide and go veto day. Barrett, I've been up for a really long time. I'm so sorry. Oh, it's okay. No, that's when it gets enjoyable around here. Uh, <laughs> this is when the after dark segment becomes really well done. Uh, see, Something we, we is even... seriously wrong with my brain. No, it's okay. We even have the scrolling text like after dark used to have, you know, where they would say, yeah. This is what is going on. And they didn't say that specifically. That would have been weird. Uh, but <laughs> this is what is going on, colon. Yeah, no contractions at all. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't know what I was going to transition to next. Oh, yeah. This episode was awful for many reasons. Uh, besides the part where it just felt like a big suspense ball for no reason. Uh, <laughs> it, the, the mornings with Memphis might be the worst segment I have ever seen on a Big Brother episode in a long time. Like, <laughs> I'm not lying to you when I was desperate to just have it end, but it kept going. And boy, did it keep going. And I get it was a little fun when they first sat down. Uh, but it went been... wrong, though. It what? does have terrible ratings. <laughs> it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just... I know those are the times where, like, do you ever have those moments where you try to convince someone that Big Brother's a strategy game and a social... And that's the shit they show on TV? Yep. ...and be like, uh, this is is what I remember about this Big Brother episode, and this is what Big Brother's about. It was that scene. And that's what was so unfortunate about the entire thing. Yeah. I understand. I, I convinced um, I convinced my friend to watch Big Brother one time, and unfortunately, it was season eighteen. Yeah. yeah. So it's just Polly with the the flag with the pies. Yeah. Or... So she'll never trust me again. She's yeah. like, don't take suggestions from her. She sucks. <laughs> Sorry. This is just the outlier episode. I swear, it's usually not like this. If you go back to like. Yeah. 16 years ago, it was really different. It was, it was good. No. I mean, what if you, what if somebody tuned in this week and they just see, like, Memphis, like, with that weird ringleader costume and voice to go with it, and then his back was injured from a paint gun <laughs> that he heard. <laughs> oh, my back seized. <laughs> what is the show? It's a social experiment. <laughs> I'm uh, sorry, Zingbots in chat is so upset with me for saying that about season 18. People always I don't say love that about it. season 18. People always say that about season 18 when we bring it up. I don't get it. I don't get the love for it. I, I don't love it at all. I love some of the people. I don't love the season. I'm sorry. Not yeah. really. I'm not, not sorry. You don't have to be sorry about it. It has like. I'm not. It has maybe three good weeks that I'd point to as being good. Uh, <laughs> and all of them involve Meech crying. Uh, <laughs> like, they all involve different segments of that. Oh, my gosh. When she thought she was going home and she... I didn't mean those things. I said she sounded like Aaron Grise, but, like, actually meaning it. Uh, it was just... I, read, I really didn't mean to say... Like, I didn't mean any of those things that I said. Yeah, I said what I said. Uh, yeah, it was funny. Um... But yeah, 18 is not a good season. It was, yeah, I don't like it. But anyway, back to this season. Yeah, like, your emotions change when you said this season. Well, I mean, tonight's episode was so cringy. It was cringy, and it did everything that I figured it would do, which is uh, pretend like they were considering putting Danny on the block towards the end of the episode so they could have something like to keep you guessing. Uh, but in fact, well, it was I mean, just... it was considered ish. It was considered ish, but like in a two weeks down the line thing was more of the right. consensus. Right. 
which is so funny to me. And and the you know what else is funny to me about this week is Enzo talking such a big game about how he was like not afraid to make big moves and yeah. he was like gonna. And and then you know when people pushed and when I say people I mean Tyler, um, pushed to get uh, Danny up on the block. He's like you know yo man I can't do it yo and that's that's the way it is like that's yeah it. that's it that's and what that's I'm saying it. yo that's, that's it. it I and need to have it. like an Enzo soundboard so I can just like you could make any yeah. Enzo sentence by just emitting like yo that's it that's what I'm saying. And mm-hmm. that, actually, that that's it. That's the three things that's that you it. need. Yeah, and it's it, done. It's done. It, it's done. It's it, it's so funny to me though. And then and then it was it today or yesterday on the feeds. He was like, he was like, yo, I don't ever want to be H O H again. This shit's hard. And I'm like, <laughs> what are you talking about? You got rid of Caser. Big deal. You got rid of somebody who has no one in the house and is not a threat to you right and that, and that was a big deal to you know case figuring out who is in this big alliance because he didn't have any trouble with enzo and he's telling people like i did i never did anything to enzo i never did anything horrible to him like exactly. i didn't talk i didn't exactly talk game to him but i didn't do anything to him and he puts me on the block after saying that you know i've never done anything to him so that's how i know he's in a big alliance like <laughs> so because someone yes but he's in the outer ring He's on the he's yeah he's in the outskirts with, with according to you know according to lore he's in the outer ring right oh that was another thing that Ian brought up in his little hammock talk he was like you know Enzo's way, like I would have considered going to the end with Enzo but I don't think I would do that anymore because he's super like he's probably one of the most underrated players in Big Brother history like he's that good he said and he was like I'd, I'd probably go to the end with like Memphis probably that's probably someone I could beat. Uh, which was now you know what would be hilarious is if ian did go to the end with memphis and then he beat memphis too he would beat dan and memphis <laughs> i'm so sorry i said that but that's I, mean but that's such a good scenario now that i think about it it would be hilarious to me and who better to take to the end than someone whose back seizes from <laughs> the sound of a paint gun who better to sit next to? Like, you know he's not going to win any part of the final three. He's like, uh, holding on to that. I can't. My back hurt. Are paint guns involved? I can't do it. <laughs> I can feel it in my back as we speak. That's right. No, I do think Enzo is underrated, but I don't think he's as great as some people who claim he's underrated. Do you think is. Memphis is playing a good game at the moment? Like... Well, I mean, if his strategy is to appear elderly and injured in order to fly under the radar, then yes. <laughs> I don't think any of that is pretending because he gets like very aggressive with how elder and how injured he is to a point where he like yells at production of just like, it's too well, cold in always, here. Like, <laughs> Yeah, he's always been, he's always been cranky. And that's the nice way of saying it. He's always been the cranky sort but now he's like a cranky dad (laughs) yeah he's definitely a get off my lawn you rascally kids type of person he he definitely is and i'm like relax chill out my goodness but he's got his own morning show he can he can say lines uh he 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 talked about uh oh my bad seas sorry (laughs) That would have been amazing in the middle of mornings with Memphis if he's just like laughing. She's like, ah, ah, ah. So funny. <laughs> they just... I just can't with him. No, I don't think he's playing a good game. Not intentionally. Yeah. I if... mean, currently, well, not I don't know about currently, but a couple of hours ago, he was being targeted again. They'll just bring him up casually until it's like midway through jury, and they're like, "Should we, yeah. get, should we kick out Memphis yet, or should we keep waiting on that one?" Yeah, every now and then somebody's like, "Well, what about Memphis?" And then it's like, "Yeah, well, but he's old and infirm, so no." <laughs> <laughs> they just think they just get confused. They think Memphis was Jerry on BB10, yeah. so. <laughs> Nobody's watched BB10, so they just think the two are the same. So it's like, gosh. Yeah, because when they sequester them, they never give them anything that goes all the way back, like season 10. Yeah, they never give them that. good seasons. Who would do that? 
Uh, <laughs> right. Which is why we have gameplay that we have is they they recruit people and then they're like <laughs> watch this and it's you know mob mentality gameplay so they think that's how to play no no stop it yeah they think it's jerry they're like i heard that they they think memphis is jerry and jerry is memphis and they're like i heard that jerry guy was a real womanizer and (laughs) memphis is like he is Memphis, I remember when you fell in the pool and hurt your back in <laughs> <laughs> season two. That was, yes, that is uh, actually his first back injury. <laughs> what would, okay, what, realistically, what would happen if Memphis now fell into the pool? Would he be more or less injured than Jerry was on BB10? I would say more. I mean, look, how, let me ask you this. The picture of Memphis that you have pulled up on my screen right now, I know that chat can't see it, but it is They can now. Okay. So this picture of Memphis hurt his back less than the sound of a paint gun. (laughs) Think about that. Think about that. He did that and rolled all over that mat on night one. No injury. But he injured his back at the sound of a paint gun. It's crazy. It is so crazy to me. Anyway, and listen... He should be a voice actor based on what I saw of him tonight during that competition. It was amazing. He could do it. It's his next career. That and restaurant owning. <laughs> uh, I gotta the, go to bed. <laughs> what the, else? <laughs> the big thing we haven't talked about is this Danny situation, really. Because mm-hmm. uh, that's been the biggest point of drama and our biggest hope for an interesting week. Uh, depending on who the HOH might be on Thursday, but you know, knowing our luck, we're not going to get the HOH we want, uh, who will actually make a shot. It's going to be someone with our luck. It will be Franzel or it will be Danny. And they're just going to try to target Bailey, uh, which, which Danny is saying she doesn't want to put him on the block. And, and Franny's like, well, you have to, you she didn't really don't say understand. We have to get them out before a jury because they're not going to vote for yeah. me because they like Janelle. Yes. She said it more like that. She didn't say it as mean as I indicated, but that was what happened earlier today. But I hope Ian wins, to be honest. It's just... And according to Ian, he's going to. He's fired up. I mean, I guess. Uh, He's talking a big game. uh, the, The big thing with Danny, and we haven't really gotten it to its full effect yet, which I, I'm sure they'll fill up some time with it tomorrow night. I'm sure Ian will get a large edit tomorrow night with his revelation. And every conversation that we talked about from then on is going to probably have a segment or so. But a big part of the past few days has been these issues with Danny. And the, the, the person who has probably the biggest issue with Danny is Tyler, or at least he's the most vocal about it. He's the one that's mm-hmm. pushing going to Enzo and going to Davon and going to Bailey saying, you know, Danny's planting the seeds to get you out. And he's going to Cody saying, you know, Danny slipped on uh, outing the slick six, you know, Nicole knows about it. And Cody's like, I know he talked about this conversation where Nicole came up to him and was like, so, uh, are you and your other alliance having a meeting or something? Which I don't know if they're going to show that, but that was an interesting tidbit. They, Nicole knows. And I think she probably knew when Danny, you know, outed it in the middle of the HOH room tonight, which is probably why she said it. But then she realized when she said it that Tyler doesn't know that Nicole knows that about the slick six. Um, but yep. Tyler takes big issue with that. Um I mean, we saw how he reacted when David just said like a sentence or two that he didn't like. He was like, oh, my game's done. Like, I'm going home. Angela. I know. He's I'm... like a child sometimes. <laughs> so he is he's gung-ho about this, let's get Danny out. Let's let's just get her out of here. She's causing trouble. You know, Danny's big first mistake, if we can remember back to the early days when Janelle was still here. Uh, and she tried to form this was... alliance with Janelle and mm-hmm. said that the people that she trusts most are, you know, Tyler and Cody and Nicole. And Janelle was like, gotcha. Um, and... That's not yeah, what Janelle what kind of said. Is that? I don't know. Yeah. yeah, Janelle said that and she did like little finger guns with it. Yeah. Gotcha. But the, the flags popped out of them and it just said, gotcha, yeah, gotcha. Yeah, it said bang. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Yosemite Sam. <laughs> then he's like, how did you get these in here? Uh, <laughs> how did you even get these on the plane to get them out here? Yeah. <laughs> um, 
So <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. And so essentially what you have, and this is so many conversations that we're just trying to condense into this conversation at 11.40 p.m. at night, um, is you have <sighs> Tyler really pushing for let's get Danny out to a point where I think Tyler would heavily consider doing it if he got HOH. Oh, yeah, he's um, doing it. It's happening. I don't. I think he's going to try to backdoor her, though. So uh, there's still a slight chance he's going to try to nominate initially, like, I don't know, like a Kevin and a... Uh, he wouldn't nominate Dave on. He wouldn't nominate Bailey. So who is he going for? Like, David? <laughs> it's Kevin? Or Cody would get out David and Kevin. Like, if, if, if Cody wins HOH, I think he would nominate David and Kevin. Oh, yeah. Cody does not want Daniel gone. No, and that's been a big issue. Because Tyler's going to Enzo and saying, let's do this. And Enzo's like, yeah, it's done. Like, it's done. And then That's he it. wouldn't do it because he's a wimp. But yeah. Uh, and <laughs> Don't tell Enzo I said that. I'm kidding. I like him. I'm sending this to him right now. Uh, th- th- he's going to go to the DR next time. And the executive team's going to be like, listen to this. And Can you <laughs> he's going to believe it? I know. And uh, uh, so Tyler's gung-ho about this with Enzo. Enzo's like, I'm down, but obviously not when I'm in power and can make a big move because I, I want to make a yeah. big move, but I just kind of say that so because it's good for the cameras. Um, and then he goes to Cody and is telling Cody all this, you know, because Tyler talked to Davon and Bay, and Cody's like, why would he, why would he do this? Uh, and Enzo's like, I don't know, yo. Uh, and he's like, Enzo and Cody suddenly have a weird relationship. Where Enzo's like ready to do this move against Danny, and Enzo's, or what am I saying? Enzo's ready to make this move against Danny, and Cody is like apprehensive because uh, right. Tyler has really gone out and pushed for this Danny move now across the house. Um, yeah, and Cody's uh, pissed about it, and well, and he was mad at Danny, and they, what a cluster. I know. So it, it's a complicated, it's a complicated thing right now, and now. Uh, you know, you have Nicole being informed by Tyler. You know, you can't you can't tell Danny everything because Danny literally says every word that you say to everyone. Uh, and Nicole's like, "Holy crap!" And uh, so you have Nicole that's maybe not 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 telling Danny as much anymore. And so things are not looking good for Danny. But I, the only hope is that someone acts on this next week and we get full scale drama. Because Danny yeah, is trying to plant the these seeds. Danny, what these people are failing to understand and realize is that Danny plays her best game as an underdog. So put her put her on the bottom. If you cannot let her know that you are after her, but that's what's going to happen with this whole. Well, let's like we've got this you know, eviction order and we're going to, you know, it's like she's two to three weeks down the line and, and that sort of thing. And other people, you know, are like, well, I'm just going to tell Danny, like, like, uh, was it Kevin? I can't remember somebody. I mean, she's going to find out, let her find out that she is being targeted and, or that she's on the outs with people. And you're going to see more aggressive gameplay from her not necessarily the aggressiveness that we've seen just personality wise but i mean like gameplay she plays her best game when she is the underdog and it has to fight don't they realize that why are they they no they don't because you know why because they've never watched any of her seasons that's why david still doesn't even know her name like david doesn't know what show he's on (laughs) <laughs> he is pretty though it's just it's crazy to me how much danielle is becoming like she is the mean girl of the season and it's crazy to me that she's the mean girl of the season because i wouldn't have like perceived that uh but you mm-hmm. know give her give her like a decade bring her back on the show and we may see her with the pots and pans like we may have the full danielle danielle donato will have the full arc i will tell you that much um <laughs> I mean, she's always been sarcastic, snarky. I mean, I I don't mind it, though. Like, I've always been a fan of hers. I've always liked her. Um, And I don't necessarily hate her right now. I hate some of the things 
um, that she has said or done in the house. I don't like some of those things, but Danielle, as a player, I don't hate, and I do think that she is capable of doing some damage in the house. But as far as like predicting um, whether or not she would be mean, I'm really not that surprised by it, to be honest. And she doesn't like being called mean. She's let that she's let that known uh, to Dave. No, she doesn't like that. And I understand, like, she has, there's things that have gone on in her life that I don't fully get. And so I understand that maybe that means something different to her. But but she's so mean. <laughs> she really is. I, I know. I'm not, look, this is what I'm saying. Like, I don't like some of her behaviors that she's exhibited because I think it is maybe more than what we've seen out of her before, but I don't think, like she's always been kind of like snippy. I mean, do we not remember on 13 when she was so mad at Rachel and Rachel was antagonizing her? Like remember at the table? When, yeah, but when when Rachel, she, that was when she was the underdog and it was fun to watch her. <laughs> this is, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, it, I don't think it's that different. It's that she wasn't on top. She played as the underdog. She played more aggressively. It was funny. Well, I mean, it's the same thing as like, you know, it, that, this just goes back to to people having double double standards or, right. or it like biases. It's like you call out a lot of things about a player that you dislike based on who they were against. But whoever it is that you like, they can be, you know, snarky and sarcastic and kind of mean also but then you're heralded as a hero for it like it's, like nicole with her hair last week right yeah i mean it's like i mean which i get because you know if it's somebody that i like and they're being you know kind of nasty and mean well i'm like yeah, and, but if it's somebody I hate and they act the same way, so I'm just as guilty of it, I guess is what I'm saying. Then I'm like, how dare she say that? So I get it, but it just, it's so funny to me to see that. But yeah, I mean, Danny, a lot of people I see are saying like, she's changed. I don't think that much really, to be honest. I just think she's just in a different position of power right now. And it makes right. it seem different. I And I hope that she is the catalyst that will spark the actual gameplay in this season. And it changes the course of how these weeks end up turning out. Because right now, it's just, it's very clear cut. Like I'm watching season 16 all over again. I don't know why people necessarily compare this to 19. I get it. Like you out, you out cash Janelle and Kaser, but everything else is very 16 to me. Uh, and it just feels that way. Because like watching Enzo win HOH this week, it was very reminiscent of watching uh like beast mode cowboy and i'm not comparing enzo to beast mode cowboy personality wise but it was very reminiscent of just watching beast mode cowboy win an hoh right after you know a tyler hoh you can compare tyler to like a derek D tyler's the most like derek out of this trio he, well i but... think he does play well in his first season i do think he played a very similar derek style game he did it's the truth uh, and then you have Cody who is playing most like <gasps> Cody. Um, and so, <sighs> but he wants to play like Derek. He needs yeah. a leader. Bless he's got, it. he's got the beanie and he's got the sunglasses like Derek. I know. And the... <laughs> he's really trying. I saw that. It was so funny. <laughs> so funny. It's like Gina Marie wearing Nick's hat. That wasn't actually Nick's hat, but <laughs> I know like it was literally part of a costuming thing that was from a comp. In Big Brother. <laughs> but he wore it once. Nick. Yeah. She had uh, a whole shrine to him. It was embarrassing. Like, she got upset when somebody moved his box of cereal. It wasn't even his box. It was a box of cereal that he ate out of that she had at her shrine. Like, it just is very bizarre behavior. Very bizarre. Nothing but net uh, in the chat says, Ian Terry will change the game next week. Mark my words. I would love I hope it. So, I mean, I have high hopes for that as well. I really do. Um, I hope that he wins HOH because I do think, I think he'll make the move. 
I mean, it's Ian. Move. He knows make- he knows he's on the outs. He knows he's mm-hmm. essentially got nothing to lose right now mm-hmm. being on the outs because they're just going to nominate him event like in the next few weeks if he doesn't yeah. do something. So why not? Yeah, like he'll take he'll take the shot. I mean, listen, it was iconic. Iconic. Tell Daniel I said that. The um when when Boogie went home and he turned on him and then his goodbye message like Ian will take the shot. I agree with uh, nothing but net. I think, I think that's yeah. an accurate assessment. I feel hopefully. like people don't necessarily remember Ian as the aggressive player on BB14, but he had his moments for sure. Where I mean, he kind, he's he's very cerebral, but he he understands game theory and game strategy, and so therefore, it like it's not necessarily. A, aggressive but it's it's an aggressive move but it's not done aggressively right and he thinks right now that he just needs to last i mean obviously we know he's trying to play low but that's not working so well anymore uh no. so he his goal and this is another thing that he talked about the hammock uh, on the hammock and i'm going back to this hammock conversation that he had with himself well, um, he spends a lot of time in the hammock he does uh, most of his day is on the hammock uh which is the only reason why i'm saying don't do any more wall yells because you take ian away from his hammock uh and i know and he he's saying you know i just need to last to like top eight and then the comps are going to be more geared for me which worries me a little bit because not. that's not how it's going to be i don't think well, it hasn't been, and I and I don't think he's watched a lot of Big Brother in the last couple of years, and that's not the way competitions have gone the last few years. Right. So, I think for the first time ever, last year we had a a, a physical Final Four veto. Like, yeah, because uh, that was the you have to shoot the ball at the faces and knock them down. That was that comp, right? That was Final Four veto. Uh, it's like I don't know, ask Daniel. It was oh, like a he... sling. It was like a slingshot. Uh, okay, uh, I'm pretty sure that was Final Four veto because I remember that was like the most drastic in your face. This is this is all physical, and of course Jackson Mickey is going to win this type of comp. Um, but yeah, and yeah, I think actually you're right, but but th- anyway. <laughs> The best best outcome tomorrow. What's what's the number one outcome for tomorrow? Like, what's the thing we want to see happen? Um, for a reset button to appear, um, as Kaser <laughs> walks towards the door, and then he stays, and then Kaser wins H O H. No, okay, so that's not gonna happen. Um, I think honestly, I want to see Ian. I want to see Ian win, and I want to see Ian make the move. That's right. what I want. I would also like to see Ian make the move. Um, I would like to see Bailey in power as well, if she can pull out an HOH. Or maybe I would like to see Davon win her first competition ever. Like, I don't think that would be poor. The thing is. I love that, except I don't. I don't think she'll make the move that I want her to make. Exactly. She's going to refrain from nominating Nicole automatically Mm -hmm. from what she said. Like, (laughs) she's like, I can't nominate Nicole until top six, but. Uh, yeah, I would rather not see her win this. Bailey, on the other hand, will nominate Nicole and probably not think mm-hmm. twice about it. So, um, I agree with that assessment. Yes, I wouldn't mind seeing. I mean, I want Davon to win a competition, I don't want it to be tomorrow, but Bailey would be good. Somebody in chat said Ian or, or, or Danny would um change the game or spark the change in the game. And I do think once Danny realizes her position in the house and she's going to, ain't nothing a secret in that house. Come on. Um, I do think she'll, I mean, she'll play aggressively for sure, both in personality and gameplay. Right. And and I feel like with the Danny HOH, it would be either I'm going to spark the change here or all of her alliance members are going to surround her and be like, you got to take the shot at uh, Bailey and Davon right now. And then yeah. they just outcast them. And then they're suddenly the two new outcasts uh, for the next couple. No, of that's weeks. exactly what would happen if she were to win, particularly if she were to win tomorrow, like I don't want her to win tomorrow, but maybe, I don't know, maybe in the next couple of weeks, I think 
she would do that. I really want Ian to win tomorrow just because I think, I think he is one of the only one. I mean, Kevin, I also feel would maybe make a decent move. Right. And then we've also already talked about Tyler possibly uh, as a, another good option for HOH, but uh, let's just hope it's not endurance. I, I, I don't, I, I don't. Mean, yeah. There hasn't, been, there has not been an endurance comp necessarily yet. You can, Give or Depends take last what, week, but yeah, what kind of endurance is it? I mean, technically, I guess the veto would be considered a type of endurance, but I mean, I think you're thinking like what, like a wall hang or like yeah. the thing where but they it just depends circle on circle and get slapped. But I don't think they're doing big construction in the yard, so I'm gonna assume it's well, not gonna be tonight's comp. It's like let's throw some ropes up and a curtain. <laughs> All right, we're good, Memphis. You're going to be dressed like a circus guy for no reason. <laughs> if you could do a voice, that'd be great. You got to add something. Got to get a little flair somewhere because it is not in the construction. <laughs> yeah. So I hopefully it's just a question cop. Like I, that's That would be the perfect cop for tomorrow. Just make it some sort of question. A, B, true, false. I don't care. Do something uh, that yeah. is not a, a crapshoot one. Yeah, I don't want to see like a, a video or people coming out and dancing and you got to remember if they're wearing pink earrings. Like, I don't want to see that crap. Can you imagine if they just threw in 20 dancers in there to break the Big Brother bubble? <laughs> and they're all wearing masks and they're like, they're full on hazmat suits. I was going to say full on hazmat suits. They, really, they can't really move. So there's... <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, They're I want to see this. They're all wearing those inflatable, um, like sumo wrestler suits because they can't afford or find hazmat suits. Well, these they days. all bump into each other, so they're all just on the ground with like turtles on their back. Just. <laughs> I've got to go to bed. I can't. All right. Or, so we'll wrap up now. We'll be back tomorrow <laughs> to talk about the eviction episode. Um, if you want to keep up with us, if you want to find us on Twitter, I'm at Spicy Barrett. Roxy is at Roxy underscore Hotman. If you want to uh, join our Facebook group again, that link is in the description below. Feel free to leave us a voicemail and we could play it tomorrow night uh, if you want to leave us one. Uh, <laughs> catch us on Apple Podcasts, leave us a review, or catch us on any other podcast platform if you want to do that. Uh, other than that, yeah, we'll be back tomorrow. Thank you guys for bearing with us. Thank you for uh, going with us through part one and part two of this podcast. Um, <laughs> yeah. So uh we appreciate it um so yeah uh yeah i, I got nothing else roxy yeah, anything it. else that's it that's cool. it yo bye-bye <laughs>